Um, thanks to Luis Suazo. Yes. Yeah. Welcome. And yeah, yeah. Five pound uh, thing. Five dollar. That's five dollar. Sorry. Um, yeah. Very exciting. Another request. That's just Can't reminded me. me. Full Metal Jacket is on Netflix. I'm going to watch that this weekend. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Anyway. Mm. Yeah, Louis Suazo. Good work, pal. Uh, he's requested Hawaii by Isles. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> great. Excellent. Yeah, great. So we'll, we'll we'll tee that up in the next next few weeks. Is it surf music? I hope so. I hope so, yeah. Um, surf Sabbath. <laughs> it's worth a listen. Um, yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks to all our patrons. They're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, awesome. Brilliant. It doesn't feel very uh, sincere, does it? Uncomfortable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really. No, really. <laughs> Thank you. It's really cool. <laughs> right, do we do it? Yeah. Hampton. Bruce Hampton. Colonel Bruce Hampton and the Aquarium Rescue Unit, which is not a made-up name of a band. It is real, there it is. And the album is called Just Colonel Bruce Hampton and the Aquarium Rescue Unit. And that's actually two artists joining forces. Um, a continuing series of bands that we we thought that they've made up. It does exist. And it's weird. I, we should have heard of this guy. I'm, I'm, it's a whole thing I've kind of not heard of at all. A little bit worried we're going to be sort of down on it. And, and it's good music. So we should, that's the disclaimer, this is good music. Um, I think we, we deal with very esoteric music. And I mean, this is esoteric music, actually, but not enough. Or maybe, maybe. You know, you read, uh, I think it's, I don't know, All Music or something, it says the related artists are Zappa, Beefheart, Allen Brothers, Flower Kings. Um, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Um, but some awesome playing, some awesome stuff, really cool voice, etc. You know, you put the first track on and it's like um, Fusion. Yes. And then you realise, isn't it? It's 145, isn't it? Oh, it's only blues. Boring. But then the guitar solo starts. Oh. It is muso stuff and great playing and all that stuff. Um, but just doesn't leap out for me. You know, it, um, to sit and listen to the whole thing, it's a live album of jazz musicians playing bluesiness. And there's a couple of moments of really coolness. But overall... It's a bit a bit bland for me. It's something something obviously to see live will be amazing, but to listen to an album of is okay. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I mean the the initial problem for me is the jazz is strong with this. Um, it's not all jazz. No, as jazz you say, is it, just sounds, for me. It, it sounds quite quite bluesy to start with. Yeah, which is His I voice. like a good blues track. You know, if you can do blues well. I'll listen to that all, all day long, yeah. Mm. I know everyone says, oh, I'm really bored of blues. It's just... The same notes. The same notes. notes. Over, over and over and over again. But, I mean, if you can pull it off... They are good notes. They're good notes. And it, it, it means... I suppose you could say it's a highly restrictive form. Yeah, because it's been done, it's been done a lot. Yeah. There's a whole tradition of it in America. So if you can do good... You're good, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. That you've got something that um, not many pe- not many people have got. It's very hard to do blues that yeah. catches the attention because you know it's just random blues. And obviously, that's why I think John Lee Hooker is so good because he's sort of he seems so unique, you know, sort of thing. Oh yeah, you can listen yeah. to a lot of blues and then you suddenly think John Lee Hooker, man, something yeah. there's something there. Yeah, anyway, so. Yeah, the jazz is quite strong. Well, there's an obvious. I've got a bit of um, ginger biscuit in my throat. It's tickling. That was a euphemism. (laughs) (laughs) Most things were euphemisms. So yeah, so there's an obvious jazz thing going on here because it is very um, uh, musician-oriented, I'd say. So there's lots of gaps in there for excellent guitaring and excellent drumming and yeah. excellentness your turn now do something amazing <laughs> uh, at rapid speed and you know I'm yeah. sure if you were to break it down you think well there's some cool shit going on you should not be able to do that yet yeah, he's done it 
That's amazing. Yes. Um, but yeah, that doesn't. That is it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's, yeah, that's wow. what's going on. There are, as you say, there are moments. So like uh, towards the end of the album, so like yeah, uh, a walk with Peltor. Uh, is it Quinius Thoth and Planet Earth? They all sound quite. Um, they sound more towards the prog end of things. Yes, in my mind. Um, but yeah, I remember. I, I, I listened to it's actually good car music. It is car it's, music. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. put it. I, I put it on, and I was sort of at the traffic lights, <laughs> patting yeah. away on, on on the on the steering wheel, bouncing along. So enjoying it, but I don't think I'm going to take it out of the car. I think that CD is going to be in the slot for ages, mm. and I never ever change the cd in the car because i listen through my phone um but i'm glad i've got it mm. because someone sent us this didn't they yeah they actually yeah. sent us two copies it, it's it's something we listen to it because we had to review it yeah and then we'll probably put it away or you'll leave it in your car and then i'll find it in like a year's time i've forgotten about anything oh i listen to it and really enjoy it it's, yeah it's that kind of thing it might be more if you see colonel bruce hampton pop up so obviously this is sort of like a later later incarnation. It certainly is, yeah. Of of of, of Colonel Bruce Hampton. Yeah. So it would be like, well, let's let's listen to some other stuff by yeah. the guy. Yeah. Investigate earlier. And that's the weird thing, is that he didn't have commercial success. That's all relative, of course, but it wasn't in this this nineties thing, this was where he had his hits where people knew who he was, kind of thing. He was but he was known to the industry and all that stuff, you know, and He's on um, Lumpy Gravy, and and we uh, money as well. But, uh, you know, in the background of the crowds of people or whatever, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was his era, and he, re- he released an album, his his him and his band kind of thing, in seventy one. And there's a joke on Wikipedia about it. It was the second lowest selling album of the year, and the <laughs> lowest selling was I can't remember something r- ridiculous, uh, which is obviously a, apocryphal. But still, it basically wasn't a, wasn't a hit, and he just carried on doing his thing, and obviously touring and all that stuff. So it was only by chance when this happened, this uh, Aquarium Rescue Unit was a band on this bill, and Bruce Hampton was on this bill. So Aquarium Rescue Unit, much more of a jazzy thing. He's a bluesy thing. He's a blues singer, obviously. So that pushes in that in that direction. I suppose that's what's interesting about it, really. Whereas either of them are on their own would probably be less interesting. Mm-hmm. Um. It was all part of this uh, horde. I had to just Google this because I couldn't remember what it stood for. I, mean, I only knew it was called horde. And again, it's, it's one of these things I don't know about that. It's it's a festival. Um, horizons of rock developing everywhere. It sounds like Ooh. early seventies pretentious. You know, nineteen ninety two. Well, have that happening in the nineties? And it's uh, basically b- the, the, lots of bands that are very different, actually, but. Uh, all have an element of improvisation in the 90s really yeah apparently you know they were the resistance yeah the resistance force and it i suppose it's maybe maybe it's on the one hand it's a bit like uh rock and opposition but then again rock and opposition didn't have any sales and it was complete media blackout it really was you know um, whereas this was a success here it is it was sold on the you know um but I wonder if really what's hap- what really happened in the, it was happening in the nineties. It wasn't nineties. You had you know the prog revival, and I remember reading in, in a magazine. It was uh, it was a teletext magazine. I wonder if people in the US will know what teletext is. Yeah, let us know. Did you have teletext? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a whole story there of stuff. But um, it's saying uh, doesn't anyone know that the prog revival was a joke? So the, the media is sort of, no, it's not really happening. Of course, Prog was had this thing happening. You had the Spock's Beardy bands and all that stuff and Prog festivals. And I suppose this is a similar thing, isn't it? Uh, Blues Traveller were the, were the biggest band and they organised it and all that stuff. Um, but also on there were the Spin Doctors. Isn't the Spin Doctors the band that they play in the World's End at the start when he's still got the old tape? That they, they they had when they were kids and he. Oh, it he might be, yeah, car. yeah. <laughs> Why is that on an improv? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the spin doctors are, or is that the soup dragons? And is that a different thing? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Same thing. It's just horrible nineties chart music, isn't it? And evidently not. 
fish are on that, as in pish fish. Um, you know, so that that was a thing. Uh, um, there you go. Epitomised by bands like the Grateful Dead and the Album Brothers. Grateful Dead, isn't it? It's the playing and all that stuff. Uh, but as an album, there is good stuff on it. That that's kind of it, you know. And I think a, a, a lot of it, um, a lot of the goodness comes from the drumming. And it's a shame it has it is a real. It's that nineties sound of live albums in the nineties where. You know, you think of 80s live albums as sounding really tinny and horrible, and often they do. But actually the 90s, it's like reverb hell. <laughs> Stuff happening in the background. There's definitely an audience. You know, you can have this sort of ambient sound of everything. Um, but you can't really hear clearly what's going on. <laughs> That's really annoying, because the drumming sounds amazing. Um, shiny. The shiny live album of the 90s sound, which at the time sounded like really big and now sounds annoying and, and, and washy Pulse actually I, I, it amazes me listening to Pulse now it sounded so amazing that <laughs> it was the biggest live album sound and it sounds like it was recorded in the 80s now don't you find I haven't listened to it for a long time so when you say Pulse you mean sort of like the album I mean rather the album, than yeah. not, not yeah, the I'm, DVD they released I, a few I imagine years ago. the DVD sounds a lot better because it came much later the flashing LED Mm-hmm. Remember that in HMV, all the flashing lights and saying battery's going to run out. Waste time. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Um, so yeah, uh, I think you met, did. You mention jazz bank? Oh no, you didn't mention jazz bank. I didn't mention. Um, it was all that area of the album, though. The last bit. Yeah, the last bit. Yeah. Although jazz bank itself, it's, it starts off and you think, "Ooh, this is going to go do a, a, a slightly silly thing," but it could, it's kind of a parody as well. And you think it's a bit, it's a bit surface. It's not proper jazz. It's it's you know it's like sixth form is pretending to play jazz, isn't it? <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Well, no, it's, it's good. It's good. It, it it I can. It what's really interesting is when I was reading about it. How first of all, there was nothing after 2015. It was like no information. In 2015, they announced a new tour. It didn't say they went on the tour. <laughs> it's announced in 2015. It's like all the information stops in 2015. And of course, what it was 2016. Um, there was a tribute concert of him, but Bruce Hampton's tribute concert. So all people who think he's good, and he was there, and he was, and he fell over during the encore, and was seriously ill. Um, and they all carried on playing. They thought he was he was messing around or something, and he had a serious problem, and he did die. He died on stage. At his own tribute. His own tribute. The encore of his own tribute concert, and that's why there's like, it doesn't say it anywhere. You go to the website, and it's just nothing. I think there's some stars. And I was trying to figure out. Okay, I know what's happened, but what, you have to actually, you know, you have to go to the Wikipedia page or whatever about about him, not about the bands. The bands don't say it because it's quite dark, really, I suppose. Um, but poetic and all that stuff. Ironic, almost. Yeah. He he lived for the music and died for the music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you could imagine there was someone really angry about that concert. Why are we having a tribute to? Bruce Hampton, if he's still alive, you don't do tributes to people that are still alive. Yeah, <laughs> and they, it's because they finished the concert. It's the encore. <laughs> it, yeah, oh, bloody hell, weird, bit bit creepy and, and strange. So it's interesting how that's that's. You can see how people have tried to play that very respectfully, and it's not just plastered everywhere. But, oh yeah, and it's, he's the guy who died on stage, which is what everyone says. First thing we said, when, and you remember who he was. Um, because obviously he's got a whole history of music and stuff, and that's cool. Yeah. Um, this is this is three eggs. It's a three egg album of good music. It's a three egg album with a five egg backstory, possibly six egg. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so check it out, maybe, if you like that kind of thing. If you specifically like that kind of thing, check it out. Yeah. If you like live stuff. I suppose so. Yeah. It is a live album. It doesn't actually say it's a live album. It sounds very live-ish. But it is live. There's even an audience. Yeah. ADD. Then again, 1992. And not like a not like a big band. I'm sure Pulse is DDD, of course. <laughs> so yeah. There you go. There you go. Hope that was sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time for more 
of, of uh, more album reviews. More album reviews of, of I don't know. It's got some, <laughs> some music. It's playing on this album. Yeah. Band playing. Should we review a film next time? Rocky. Rocky. Rocky Four. Rocky Four. <laughs> What's the one with the robot? He's like a piece of iron. Uh, I've not seen that. I've only seen parodies of it. Isn't there a robot in one? It's all eighties and. Doo, doo, doo. Oh yeah, that might be Rocky Four actually. Oh, I thought you meant which, what's the one where he fought a robot, but he didn't. There's um, just a robot in it for some reason because it's the eighties. It's the one with Dolph Lundgren. Everyone oh. says it's the worst one. All right. It's the one I've seen the most. Well, it's probably the cheapest. So it's probably on TV the most. I bet it's not a robot. I bet it's remote control. He goes to Russia and he fights him in Russia. All right. Basically, what happens is spoiler alert. Right, Carl Weathers' character, Apollo Creed. Mm. He's like he he's training. He's been training Rocky ever since uh, his the Penguin died. You know the guy who played the Penguin in the original Batman series. Oh, the original Batman series. Yeah. Oh, really? Was he in Rocky One? Yeah, he was his trainer. Oh, see. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, so since Carl Weathers, uh, Apollo Creed took over, and like Apollo Creed was really uh, upset because this. You know, he, he was on the way, on the way out. Uh, he wasn't important anymore. And then this Russian came along, all science and stuff like that. They'd, they'd use science to, say, to yes, make well, him the robot. ultimate boxing it's machine. Smoke machine. And uh, Carl Weather, uh, Apollo Creed was like, oh man, I've got, we've got to take him on. He's sort of like, he's nothing. He hasn't got, he hasn't got the smart sort of thing. He's got, you know, and all that. Anyway, the Russian guy kills him in the ring. Right. For tragedy. Yeah. Rocky Balboa is really upset. And and he goes to fight him in Russia to sort of um, avenge his death. Yeah, like like Klingons, it's all about honor, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And he and he trains in the snow and stuff like that. And because uh, it's the eye of the tiger and all that kind of stuff. And then they get Gonna in there. Need a montage. And and, and Rocky he keeps hitting Rocky, but Rocky doesn't go down. He keeps fighting. He's got inner strength, inner stamina, which. Even Drago just can't quite knock out. He, he's like a piece of iron. <laughs> <laughs> and then towards the end, Rocky gets a punch in and it starts turning. And yeah, well, you know what happens. And then Rocky makes a great speech where we could all live together. We're all great, you know, Russians and Americans. Yeah. Because <laughs> we know the wall's going down right now. So it's fine. <laughs> That's Rocky Four. Rocky movies are terrible, aren't they? Uh, Rocky the, One yeah. is a really, really good film. It's an excellent film. Okay. I think. I, honestly, I've, I, bet, I bet I've not seen one all the way through. I've seen bits of all of them, I imagine. That's, that's why I don't have any... You know. You've got to watch Rocky without the baggage. You've got to remember, at this point, Sylvester Stallone is not a famous person. He's taken the hit. They offered him a lot more money if someone else starred in the film, but he refused. They yeah. offered him more money... Understand. Because he wasn't a star, they wanted a star in the film, so, so they, they offered him more money. They offered him more money for the film because he wrote the film. Oh, he wrote the film. I yeah. If if they got someone else involved to to make because no, I will do it myself. Right. And he and he took it on himself, and it is a great. It, honestly, it's a sort of yeah. It's okay. archetypal, is what it is. Yeah, which is yeah. will also be its problem, won't it? Yeah. 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 It won't have the sort of Godfather stuff. There you go. Film reviews. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's do more of that. What else can we do? Well, Sam will know stuff, and I won't. <laughs> well, you've, seen you've, this film, you've not seen a Rocky. Or, um, maybe that's a new thing we could do. Sam explains films to Kev that yeah. he hasn't seen. Yeah, films that I've not seen. That. Isn't that a shit film? No. <laughs> it's very good. Really, okay. Understand this, Kev. Mm. We, were, we went to watch that the film we watched last night, uh, King of Thieves, and I knew it was going to be a really average film. Sarah expected it to be the best thing ever. Is it a good trailer? Yeah. Well, it had all all the uh, the makings of being a very average film. It had a, a really good cast. It had a, a story that sells itself. Yeah. And the cast were out pushing it quite hard. Right. So you yeah, got Ray just... Winston and all that going around doing the doing the runs. No I, magic. Ju- I just knew it was going to be crap. Oh, was that, so you think it was crap or was it just meh? Meh. Meh. Okay. Supremely meh. That's all right. Yeah. Well, most films are met, obviously. Although, to, that's the thing when we review albums and we say three eggs, it almost seems like we're saying it's crap. No, three's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, we choose albums that we like. So, you yeah. know, there's four eggs or five eggs, and that's it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Rocky, I mean, I, I, I know much more about Punch Out on the NES. 
<laughs> than Rocky. It makes that makes me think of that. Not this one. Not that one. No, the other one. The, the earlier one. The one on this. I don't play that. What you got to remember in Rocky is Rocky didn't win the fight. Oh really? It was a draw. I think it was a draw. All right. Okay. But the the fact the the big thing was he actually went the distance. Right. With yeah. with Apollo Creed. There ain't gonna be no rematch. You ain't gonna get no rematch. Yeah, yeah, so I mean that's a much better story, isn't it? Than yeah. yeah, he trained and then he won. And actually Rocky too, um, I mean, that has merit as well because the story shifts then. How does how does Rocky um deal with the sudden fame he's got? And the difference between the expectation of fame and the reality of it. Um well, that's that's a good sequel. That's how you yeah. do it, and you make yeah. it about it, yeah. about itself. Like and, Kremlin's too. And then you got Rocky Three, Pain, <laughs> B.A. Bracker's vehicle, Club of Lang, mm -hmm. uh, and then it just goes completely off the rails with Rocky Four. But yeah, it's a shame. It's the way these things. Are. It's like Hangover, isn't it? Hangover One was actually quite a funny, refreshing it's really good. film. Yeah, I really enjoy that. And then they made three or four of them. And yeah, well, just number two completely is, killed it, it. It's shot for shot, just in a different part of the world. It, Hangover 2 is the same film <laughs> and then 3 is huh? I think they renamed 3 from something else and made it Hangover Did film they? Yeah. I think Zach Galifianakis is a, a genius and I think in 20 years time 30 years time whatever people will look back and actually go yeah he, so what, what else did you make? he's in a load of his own he, well he's sort of like the main star in his own films now but uh, what's the one where he's running for president uh, running for Um, to be a governor is it a governor or whatever I don't understand American politics <laughs> the campaign I think it's called with Will Ferrell that's quite funny I've not seen that that sounds quite good yeah uh, there's uh, there's one where he there's some spy, uh, some secret agents moving there. I think it's called the Smiths or something like that keeping up with the no not that's Mr and Mrs Smith no, keeping yeah, up with the Joneses or yeah. something like that yeah. um, we watched that on the plane and we were laughing our asses off watching that um what else has he done? Oh, he was with uh, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, he's got it's a, trans planes and automobiles. Really, sort of, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And he was, honestly... <laughs> yeah, yeah well, they're, they're trying to sleep in the car. And there's suddenly <laughs> this noise. What are you doing? Masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Can't sleep. <laughs> sleep there's sleep. something about that. And he's on... Um, Jerry Seinfeld even, even said, oh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, I, mean, I don't understand the, the big thing. But, I mean, Seinfeld he says... Seinfeld, you're, yeah, he said, you know, he, he interviewed him on his Comedians Getting Cars and he did say, look, you're just funny. You could do anything you thought. And he is, he's just sort of... He's very funny, yeah. He's, right. ex he's extreme very funny. Yeah. And he's got the same thing as um, Andy... What's his, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman, God, it's very, oh. In the sense that you're watching him, but you're not sure if you're watching him or, or you're acting. watching a character and he's acting sort of thing going on. Even right. sort of like in his interviews... Stuff like you don't know, you you get a sense. Is he I, I, all the time? I don't know this Zach Galifant. I don't know quite who he is. He's always, yeah, yeah. he's always in character. Yeah. Well, anyway. oh, I mean, that's a, I mean, Andy Kaufman, that's a, that's a bit of a stretch. I mean, that's like, whoa. Well, yeah, that's what you mean, though. Yeah. yeah. But weirdly, by coincidence, um, of, of um, getting, getting back into the Nightmare on Elm Street films, um, which I loved as a kid. I was way too young. As everyone our age watched Robocop and all the rest of it, it was the video nasty era and we watched films we shouldn't have been watching because everybody did. <laughs> we also saw horror films age 10. <laughs> and they're, they're, uh, they are much better than I thought, actually. You know, you, you think, okay, one is a really good film. May have aged badly, but it's a really good film. Two is just a mess. A sort of disaster of ideas, and then three. Well, it's quite cool, but it's not good. And then after that, it's a waste of time. No, actually, um, one is brilliant. It is frightening. That is a frightening film. Fantastic concept, um, and all those ideas in it. There's so many ideas in that film, you know. And then two obviously went wrong, but it was an interesting idea, and it wasn't supposed to go like that, you know. Um, and three is great. The the, the surreal element of it. Um, really works it's a great idea and then, then you've got the concept of although it's churning them out and it's how, how does he kill them you can be as surreal as you like and that, that's a thing that's an interesting thing and, and 
although they didn't go anywhere with it, the, the, you know, the, the next stage of it should have been about, you know, uh, when they got to five and it was the dream child. Fred, Freddie has a child. <laughs> Could have been about the fact that there's kids watching it, you know, and, and, and etc. And so there's moans about it, but it's a, it's a great... It's a great series, you know. And I remember six, well, five I couldn't remember at all, at all. Four I only remember the bit when the girl gets turned into a bug. <laughs> that's the only bit I can remember. Um, six I remember because that's that's the weakest one. Um, the only bit anyone remembers out of that is the computer game bit when Freddy kills him in in a computer game, and obviously they had run out of ideas then. That was, you know. And then seven, which I think is really interesting. It's not necessarily fantastically executed but conceptually brilliant they're much better than I thought because yeah. really, I haven't watched them for a long time I, I started mid, midstream as well I think I watched The Dream Warriors as, was the first one I watched and I kind of went forward from there and wow. then went back yeah. to uh, the early ones and I didn't find them it, one felt very old very quickly yeah. <laughs> but now we're so far away I mean it's, as you say it's a great concept Someone yeah. coming to get you in your dream. You've got to sleep. Yeah. You know, there's no way around it. You've got to sleep. So there's that inevitability about it. Yeah, and, is, it, um, and it's about the levels of reality and that you can that can really happen in real life. You yeah. just don't die when you wake up. Yeah. It's very clever. Yeah. There we go. Mm. I think we've been talking too long now. We have been talking too long. Yeah. Mm. All right then. Mm. You don't